With patch 10.1.5 just around the corner, we're likely to see a major shakeup to the meta in the coming weeks. And even though it might not last very long, this week's hotfixes may have finally given us an S tier melee for the first time in a while. A few other melee have also received some noteworthy buffs, and one of the best healers has been hit with quite a substantial nerf. As always, we've consulted with some of the best players around to unravel what this week's hotfixes mean and how they will affect the Solo Shuffle power rankings to bring you a Solo Shuffle tier list update. Before we get into things though, we want to take a moment to remind you of the 400 rating game guarantee you can find only over at skillcap.com. That's right, from just $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you will see the results you want or get your money back, no questions asked. With a subscription to Skillcapped, you gain access to class guides that walk you through step by step how to deal damage, how to survive, and how to crowd control just like a rank 1 pro. We also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct access to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals in recent months, so if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. For now though, let's get back into the video. First, we want to mention that DPS across the board has been nerfed for DPS and for that one guy who still plays tank. This means that momentum classes that need to ramp up their damage will become slightly stronger as games will be just a little bit longer and less one-shot oriented, or so we hope. Moving into the class changes, we'll begin with this week's melee losers. First, sub rogues have been nerfed. We repeat, sub rogues have been nerfed. Well, it looks like Peekaboo has Secret Techniqued himself into too many victories and landed himself with a victor's penalty. Secret Techniques damage has been reduced from 33% to 40% in PvP. This results into around a 25k damage decrease on the ability. While that doesn't sound like a lot, it can prevent some kills from landing or allow you to get that precious global off before getting one shot in a stun. Thief's Bargain Damage penalty has also been increased to 10% from 6%, but honestly, this doesn't do much given that Vanish is mostly used to survive or is used at the beginning of a setup, and so the damage modifier won't even be rolling while their actual go is happening. In addition to this, with more players starting to gain access to the 4 piece set bonus, sub rogues will be able to dish out massive eviscerates, making the nerf to secret techniques matter even less. So overall, these changes won't be enough to put sub rogues down a tier, leaving them in our A plus tier. Next, let's take a look at this week's melee winners. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's your local Illidan enjoyer and he's been buffed out of his mind. Buffs so big, in fact, that we've moved him up an entire power ranking to sit solemnly on his throne of S tier. Demon Hunters, a class which is already doing pretty good in the caster meta, has just received damage buffs on almost all of their abilities. These buffs, along with how obnoxious it can be to shake a DH off you through all their backflips, micro CC and demons breaking all their crowd control, will make them an absolute nightmare in solo shuffle. Just watch out for getting one shot by sub rogues, buddy. Moving up to A plus tier to take Demon Hunter's place are Feral Druids. Feral Druids performed a lot better than we anticipated during the last patch and probably should have already been in our A plus tier. And now that they have received a 3% damage buff on all their abilities, it's safe to say we can definitely move them up. As we mentioned earlier, momentum ramp up classes like Feral Druids should feel the benefit of the stat change as the reduced amount of damage taken might allow Ferals to sit in cat form for longer. Moving on, Windwalkers have also caught a stray gift from Blizzard, being buffed by a meagerly 3%. Unfortunately for all you Dragon Ball fans, this is not enough to move their power ranking and they will continue to hold it down in the A tier. You can buff monk damage all you want, but unless they're literally one-shotting your opponents, the caster heavy meta just does not favor them well. Finally, Enhanced Shamans have received some small healing buffs to Earth Shield and Healing Surge while receiving a small nerf to Healing Stream. These changes are more relevant to 3v3 though, as dampening stacks up too quickly for them to really change enhancements, influence, and solo shuffle. As a result, they will remain in the A plus tier. Here's the updated melee tier list for this week's hot fixes. Demon Hunter is the clear winner of the who will be overpowered next bingo, but no one else really lost out either. Ferals also received a little bit of love, and pairing that with their recent performances has also landed them in the A plus tier. Rogues did take a little bit of a nerf, but they should remain strong in the A+, despite the secret technique damage reduction. Enhance caught a few healing buffs, which won't really move them up a tier due to how fast dampening stacks in solo shuffle. And finally, Windwalker got a 3% damage buff too, but it's not enough to make a song and dance about, leaving them idling in the A tier once again. With melee out of the way, let's move on to the ranged DPS losers of the patch, starting with Warlocks. 
Warlocks have received a huge defensive nerf on their soul link, reducing its damage reduction from 10% down to 5%. This is pretty substantial for demonology, however destruction and affliction aren't too affected as they usually play with the talent Grimoire of Sacrifice, meaning they don't actually benefit from soul link. The Mortal Coil nerf also affects all the specializations, although it's a bit of an odd nerf considering that Blizzard is trying to nerf their survivability and more often than not, Mortal Coil is used as an offensive tool rather than as a defensive one. They have also nerfed Profane Bargain which is a talent that 9 out of 15 of the top warlocks are using so not a huge loss. These nerfs will result in Demonology moving down from the S tier to the A plus tier as they will now take a lot more damage from melees who already were a bit of a pain point for the class in melee heavy lobbies. As for Destruction it will remain in the A plus tier as Coil is largely used for setups and not healing. And Affliction will be remaining in the A tier for similar reasons. Moving on, Balanced Druids are also finding themselves on the end of the nerf bat, however they will not be affected nearly as hard. Although the root beam nerf looks big on paper, how many healers can you actually root beam? It seems like half of the healers on the ladder are gnomes and the other half are resto druids and resto shamans, both of which are able to break out of roots on their own, not to mention evokers delaying you from pressing it forever with obsidian scales. The Owl Can Frenzy nerf has also already been tried. This is the second iteration of this nerf and really does not solve the main problem of Cyclone just being too strong when paired with high winds. All in all, Boomkins will most likely remain in the S tier. Now it's not all doom and gloom for ranged DPS as three classes have received some buffs so let's take a look at the ranged DPS winners. The clear winner of the ranged buffs are Shadow Priests who have received a plethora of single target damage buffs and a few AoE damage nerfs. These damage buffs are pretty substantial as you often win via single target damage in solo shuffle while crowd controlling the healer with silence, fear, and horrify. The catharsis nerf is a tough break for lower rated shadow priests who relied heavily on it while being tunneled, however for those who can land their casts, the single target buffs more than make up for it. Unfurling darkness has also been nerfed which is to be put bluntly, very odd. Unfurling will continue to be used to apply your dots on a secondary target and you won't really feel this change too much. Because of these buffs and how the class has been performing in the current season, we're going to be moving Shadow Priest up to the S tier. Marksmanship Hunter has also received 10% damage buffs on aimed shot and rapid fire. These buffs will make them absolutely shred cloth users, but the class is so fragile and hard to play compared to other meta classes that it's hard to justify moving Marksmanship Hunters up a tier. Therefore MM will stay as a solid A tier class. Our final ranged winner are Elemental Shamans who have had their healing altered in exactly the same way as Enhance has. This is a nice quality of life change to an already S tier class and you may see shamans live a little bit longer when their healer is crowd controlled in the early stages of the round. However, these changes won't really impact the overall strength of elemental shamans as all they've done is shift healing away from healing stream and into healing surge, leaving the spec in our S tier. And with that we have our updated ranged DPS tier list. The only ranged moving up ranks are shadow priests who are now joining elemental shamans and balanced druids on the S tier. Joining their destruction brethren and demonology warlocks who are moving down to the A plus tier due to the survivability nerf to soul link. And despite their respective buffs and nerfs, both marksmanship hunters and affliction warlocks remain comfortably in the A tier. Finally let's move on to the healers, starting with this weeks losers. First up we have restoration druids who are definitely the biggest losers in these hotfixes. Verdant infusion allowed restoration druids to extend the duration of their hots such as scenarian ward by using swift mend. This made it easier for druids to heal multiple targets at once. By nerfing the extended hots duration from 8 to 4 seconds, druids are going to have a much harder time maintaining their team under pressure as they will now have to focus on manually applying hots instead of relying on swift mend. Druids did also receive some slight buffs, however in solo shuffle they are mostly meaningless, with the snare increase on reactive resin not doing much. They also gained some additional mana regeneration on master shapeshifter, but again these changes do not really counterbalance the nerf to reactive resin. It's for these reasons that we are moving Resto Druid down from the A plus to the A tier. The second healer loser of the patch are Restoration Shamans, however some might not even consider it a loss. Blizzard are attempting to move some of their instant cast throughput from healing, stream, totem, and earth shield into the casted heals of healing wave and healing surge instead. Now on paper this does look like a nerf as historically restoration shamans have typically thrived when they do not have to hard cast heals. This is because it allows them much more room for utility globals such as hex, purge, earthbind, and so on. With that being said, the only instant healing being nerfed is healing stream and the healing aspect of earth shield. While the healing stream nerf may have some impact, earth shield is mainly valued due to its healing increase effect rather than its direct healing. 
with the main stat nerf coming in and potentially slowing the game down as well, it's to be seen where Restoration Shamans will fit in. If they have room to breathe and can happily cast in the back, these are a welcome change. If not, then they may be a huge nerf. For now though, we're going to keep them in the A plus tier. Now let's wrap things up with the healer winners. First, Holy Priests have received some damage buffs. Although these numbers do look high on paper, it is very rare that Holy Priests have enough downtime in Solo Shuffle to spam Smite. Chastise is also usually used on the healer as a form of crowd control, thus the damage buff here is negligible. With that being said, the additional damage on Shadow Word Death could allow them to squeeze out a few more kills here and there, and the Holy Fire change will add up over the duration of a game. As for our placing of Holy Priests, we had previously placed Holy Priests too low on our power rankings, putting them down at the B-plus tier. However, thanks to Play Ingenuity, two new builds have been discovered since then, with one revolving around Lightwell and the other around Gift of the Nehru. It's thanks to this that Holy Priests are now performing far better than before, thus earning themselves a promotion from the B plus tier to the A tier. In a similar fashion, Disc Priests have also gained a small damage increase on all their abilities. However, much like Shadow Priests, they have had their Catharsis damage reduced to compensate. These buffs, once again, aren't too drastic for Solo Shuffle, as more often than not, Disc Priests do not have the globals to be offensive unless their team is already ahead in the game. Joining the damage buffs is an increase to their atonement healing. While we think this is a nice addition, relying on damage to heal is just not viable in a Solo Shuffle environment most of the time. Sadly, these changes won't really change the playstyle in the way Blizzard hope, and Discipline Priest will remain a heal bot rather than playing to the offensive strengths of the class. And it's for these reasons that Disc Priest won't be budging from the A tier. Moving on to our final healer winner of the patch, we have Mist Weavers, who have gained a small healing increase on their enveloping mist. This will help increase their overall throughput, but not enough to move them up a tier, so they'll be staying in the A plus tier. And with that, we have our updated healer tier list. Disciplined Priest will be remaining in the A tier as their atonement buffs just aren't enough to truly elevate the class due to it being too hard to capitalize on in Solo Shuffle. Joining discs are Holy Priests, moving up to the A tier from the B tier as we previously underestimated how much healing they could dish out. Restoration Druids are also going to be joining Holy Priests in the A tier after moving down from the A plus due to some brutal nerfs to their Verdant Infusion talent. And moving into the A plus tier, Restoration Shamans and MW Monks are still sitting pretty with the addition of their respective buffs and nerfs. As a reminder guys, don't forget about our 400 rating gain guarantee, which you can only find over at skillcap.com. From just $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see the results you want or you get your money back, no questions asked. So if you want to gain access to our world class guides and network of pros to start climbing the ladder, be sure to click on the discount link below and sign up today. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.